Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about uh, section 1.6, products and quotients in exponential form. So recall that before we, we learned about multiplication, like as I z1 and times z2, where uh, that's going to be x1 plus i y1 uh, times x2 uh, plus i y2. And what we had to do is that whole uh, FOIL process that we learned from algebra where the, these multiply and these multiply and we have to do all the uh, cross terms. Okay, and of course we find out that um, we can get to, you know, it's x1, x2, uh, plus uh, we have to do all the imagine, and then we do the, the, sorry, and then the other real part is going to be minus y1 times y2, so that's the real part, plus i uh, of x1, y1, uh, plus x2, uh, y2. Sorry, I'm, uh, oops, I'm uh, making a bit of a mistake. That should be y2, and that should be x2, y1. There we go. All right. So this is kind of, uh, you know, tedious. And uh, you can't really tell what's going on here. What, what is the action? Uh, if I'm multiplying z1 by z2, what's this doing in the plane, right? If I have uh, some uh, z1 here, and, I, and uh, now I want to multiply z2 by it. Let's say z2 is right here. Well, you know, where... And then what's going to happen later? I mean, wh where is this going to go? Is it, you know, where is, uh, uh, where is W here? If this is called W, where is it in the plane? What kind of motion happens in the plane when I take two numbers and multiply them together? So if I take these two together, will it go there or will it go over here or down there? Where is it going to go? All right, so the idea is maybe we can use our uh, exponential form or rather our polar form to see if we can get some insight. So now let's go write this this way. Z1 is equal to R1 e to the i theta 1. All right, so we're going to put that on there. That's theta 1. And the R1, of course, is just this length there. Okay, and Z2 is then R2 e to the i theta 2. And that will be that um, angle there. That'll be theta 2. Okay, and then R2 will be right there. So that's R1. Okay, all right, so now let's put these together. So Z1 times Z2 is going to be R1 e to the i theta 1, R2 e to the i theta 2. All right, so we know that uh, uh, these two numbers should multiply together. We're going to get R1, R2. That represents the new magnitude of our vector, of our, uh, of our, our product. And then we know that exponents sum, so that should become e I, theta 1 plus theta 2. So we get a really nice, really clean result that helps us understand what the action of multiplication is like in the complex plane. So we see that, uh, you know, magnitudes multiply. So if we have two numbers greater than one here, then of course the, sum, the product will be even bigger. Uh, and we see here that uh, angles sum. All right, so that's really nice. So now we know that if I take these two angles and I put them together, so if I take theta 1 and theta 2, it should actually, there's theta 1, and then theta 2 is right about there. So we can just put that there. And then we have to know what the magnitudes are here. So that becomes our W right there. So let's do a couple examples of what's going on here. But before we do that, let's just uh, uh, clarify something. What about conjugates? So now if I have z is equal to r e to the i theta, z bar then should be r e to the negative i theta, right? So if we take these two together, z times z bar, that will become r times r e to the i theta minus theta, and that will always be zero, so we just get r squared, right? Just as we expected that these two numbers lead to the magnitude of the vector uh, of z squared. Okay, so there's another nice little result there. Um, uh, so now let's uh, go over some more of these results. So what about, um, what about, uh, so if we have uh, basic quantities like this, we want to also um, talk about inverses. So recall if I have z is equal to x plus i y, 
then we know to find 1 over z, or what we call z to the negative 1, what we have to do, of course, is uh, we had to do that uh, slightly crazy formula, and I'll write it down for you. We found out it was x squared plus y squared all over x minus i y. Again, that's a, a lot to memorize. and We can kind of make that more compact, call that z, the magnitude of z squared all over z bar. Okay, let's see if we can in exponential form now. Our polar form. Let's see if we can come up with an even better way of writing this. So if z is equal to r e to the i theta, then put it like that. z to the negative 1 is going to be r e to the i theta to the negative 1. Okay, that's going to... So remember, exponents uh, uh, go right through products. e to the i theta to the negative 1. So that becomes 1 over r. And what ha so exponents, I want to do other exponents, multiply, so that becomes e to the i, or to the negative i, theta. All right, so that clearly, I can rewrite this again as r over r squared e to the negative i, theta. And we get exactly the result we've seen before, where that looks like z bar right there, all over the magnitude of r squared. Okay, so that looks good. Now we have some uh, much cleaner, a much cleaner way to write, uh, a much more cleaner way to write, and a much more cleaner way to just construct um, inverses. So a lot of things in polar or exponential form are much easier to do. Okay, so now let's try, um, let's try uh, to uh, get an idea here. So again, let's let's summarize a bit. Okay, so you know multiplications. you know, they have kind of the action of rotation. In fact, if I have, if w is a, you know, is a complex number, and I have it such that w, the magnitude of w is equal to 1, so basically w can be described as e to the i theta, okay? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to use a different angle there. I'm going to use a different symbol. I'm going to call it phi, right? So that's my w. And then if I think of the action of, of w on some other number, so if z represents some um, complex number I'm interested in, and I want to know what the, what's the action of w times z, well, we know that it has to be one of rotation. And I'm going to call it pure rotation because the magnitude here is 1. So the answer, of course, is e to the i phi times r e to the i theta, and it's equal to r. So the, the, the magnitude of, of, the, uh, of the complex number doesn't uh, change. But then we get e to the i theta plus phi. So if I look in the plane, it is a pure, what we call a, oops, get a better number. Uh, there we go. So let's say my theta is right there, and let's say, you know, phi is maybe a, uh, you know, uh, right here. I take those two together, and the result, so if there's my z, the result is going to be w times z will be there. So it, it moves z over by, um, by phi angle to this new answer right there. Okay, so now let's do some more uh, uh, things. Now we'll talk about exponents, uh, expon exponentiation. All right, so now again I have z and it's equal to x plus i y, or also r e to the i theta, depending on which uh, form we prefer. Now what, what I, want, I want to know is how do I get z to the n? So before, if we just had our, our uh, xy coordinates, we'd have to go e to the x, uh, or x plus iy to the n, and we'd have to use like the binomial formula, which would be a lot of multiplication to get that all the way through. But now, of course, we can just take uh, r e to the i theta, exponentiate that, and we get r to the n. So we get the nth exponent of 
of r, which is a, a, just a real number, we have e to the i n theta. Okay, so again, now if I have some some number in the complex plane, so, and it's uh, there's our theta, we see it now. If we have n of those, we just have to uh, we just have to keep adding theta to itself till we get it around till till you get to n theta, let's say. So we just keep moving around there like that. All right, so so we can think of this as whatever this angle is, what it results in, that's where we end up. So this could go around, of course, the, the complex plane many times if n pi, or if n theta is bigger than 2 pi. Um, so uh, now let's do some examples real quick to finish off this lecture. So let's talk about a, a particular example. Let's talk about, um, let's see, z is equal to uh, square root of 2 e to the i pi over 3. All right, so let's draw what that looks like in the complex plane. So pi over 3 is about right there. Um, oops, sorry. Okay, pi over 4 is right there, so it's a little bit bigger. There we go. We'll call that pi over 3 right there. And, it, and it's, uh, I'm going to put it right there. That's our square root of 2. Okay, and now I want n is equal to 6. I'm going to take the 6th power of that. So z to the 6th power is going to be equal to root 2 to the 6th power times e to the i pi over 3 to the 6th power. And that becomes um, 8 times, so that's a, a root 2 times uh, to the 6th power. And this becomes e to the i um, 2 pi. Okay. So what happens then is, okay, e to the i 2 pi is actually just 8, right? Because e to the i 2 pi, it goes around the circle uh, one complete time and goes back to where we started, so that's equal to 1, right? And so we get there from root 2, we extend all the way out to 8, and then we rotate all the way around till we get there. So 8 on the real axis. Okay, so we, we have this big rotation. All right, so now let's try another one. We'll use the one in the book. We'll do another example. So that's what we'll call example 1, ex1. Now let's try ex2. It'll be one from the book, and it is uh, we want to take, we want to find 3 plus i, or root 3 plus i to the seventh power. Okay, so first of all, let's find out what. Uh, root 3 uh, plus i is um, in polar form. So uh, let's, uh, let's draw a picture of that. So I'm going to draw another uh, picture in the complex plane. So it goes out to, we'll, we'll say that's root, um, root 3 right there. And it goes up uh, just i in that side right there. So it becomes um, something like about there. Okay, so that's our, that's our z, if you will. So now I want to take that to the seventh power. But now, how do I find the r e to the i theta? I want to find out what r is. So r, of course, is going to be the square root of uh, root 3 squared, so that's 3, plus uh, 1, which is equal to 2. Okay, so r is equal to 2. And then uh, theta is going to be equal to um, tangent inverse of, um, of 1 over root 3. So if we check our, check our uh, trig tables, we find out that has to be, for numbers in the, in the first quadrant, that has to be pi over 6. So that's uh, pi over 6. All right, and that right here is magnitude 2. Okay, so now we have z is equal to 2e to the i pi over 6. All right, so now what is the result, now we want to find z to the seventh power. Of course, that's 2 to the seventh, oops, 2 to the seventh times e to the i 7 pi over 6. Okay, so where did we go? So we have to figure out what angle that is. And so I'm going to break this up a bit. So um, I know 2 to the 3 is 8, and so 2 to the 6 has to be 64, right? Uh, and then I have to multiply that by another 2 to get 2 to the seventh. And likewise, I see here what we really have is e to the i 
uh, and I'm going to call it um, pi over 6 plus pi. Okay, that's just a different way to write it. So we're going to break this up a little bit. And so I see actually this is 64 e to the i pi. And then I see a, a remnant of our old number there, 2 e to the i pi over 6. Okay, so I've just rearranged things a bit here to kind of uh, put things in the right. So what is e to the i pi? Well, that's a pretty famous one. That's negative 1. Okay, so that becomes negative 64. And of course, this number right there was exactly what we started with. So we can put that there, root 3 plus i. Uh, but again, this is still probably more important. We know that this is going to be pi, oops, angle pi plus another pi over 6. So I'm going to put that down there. And, um, and it's going to be of a magnitude uh, 2 times 64. So uh, 100 and, uh, um, 132. So uh, way over here. So that's going to be the result z to the seventh power. So that's going to be uh, um, all the way around. That'll be 7 pi over 6. Okay. All right, so, um, so, so those are the results, and those are some examples of how uh, we can use uh, the, the polar form or the exponential form of, of a complex number to do a lot of exponentiation in the complex plane. So, of course, we know now that, um, that uh, angles sum, and so that's the whole point of, of multiplication. So thank you very much.